anyone who wants more muscle mass, I would say, go get it like this. I mean, this shit got me. It fucking got me. Gotcha. If I would have done these, I would have been puking. Okay. That's why I had, I mean, you I didn't, I don't want to puke all over your gym. That's all right. It's all right. Can we take it back to 95? Before we have this drama in our lives. Just staring at the screen every day and night. Hey everyone, Marcus Philly here with FunctionalBodybuilding.com. And today my special guest is my friend, Ben Patrick, also known as the knees over toes guy. Ben is a pioneer at using movement to get people out of knee pain. And when you're going to be training to stay healthy and fit over many, many years, it's likely that you're going to encounter pain or injury at some point. The problem is that when people encounter pain, they often have to step outside of the gym and head towards physical therapy or medical interventions. But there's not an easy road to continue staying active and not only rehab an injury, but build strength and resilience without the fear that you're going to mess up your body and get right back to square one with your injury. A question I get all the time now is, Marcus, how do we bring these powerful movements that Ben is using in his programs and bring him into a complete strength conditioning training program like your own? So today we're here to show you five moves that Ben uses to get people out of knee pain and how to bring them into your strength, hypertrophy, and conditioning training so that you can stay consistent in your training, look good, and move well for decades to come. All right, to kick this off, we're gonna be starting with the concept of full knee bend at your level, of course. We're gonna illustrate that with the ATG split squat and I'm gonna showcase how this can be done in a hypertrophy superset designed for putting on muscle inside a training program. So this can be started with just your own body weight of trying to get that full bend, which means for most people, lifting the front heel. Now he's gonna actually be working towards keeping the heel down. He has additional load, just gonna do five each side. And What's the most important thing that we learned so far is that assisted is okay. You see this? So without pain going to your level of full knee bend, most people are gonna have to do this one side at a time. What am I gonna do with partially artificial kneecap here? No surgeries on this side that are loose. So no matter how much double-legged squatting I did, my knees never felt quite right until I put it together here. So we want to master this first without weight, with the heel up to get that full coverage before we start going to weight. What the weight is going to do is then actually start pulling us deeper and deeper into that ankle mobility. So in the workout example that you're seeing, we are pairing the HEG split squat with an upper body movement for hypertrophy. In functional bodybuilding, we use a lot of unilateral exercises. And in a hypertrophy setting, we're looking to build time under tension. And what we effectively do when we use something like an ATG split squat or a single leg exercise is it helps us to double the time under tension because you have to do both sides of your body. So you get a bigger stress response from an exercise like this when it's placed inside of a hypertrophy superset. Choosing an exercise like this with a big range of motion on top of increased time under tension is a double win when it comes to increasing the intensity and the stimulus that you get in a hypertrophy setting. But furthermore, when we build strength in a big range of motion, we're also going to maintain the full amount of positions that you're capable of in that joint or that movement pattern. What that does is it helps repair your body as you're trying to build muscle. This is going to keep you athletic, moving safely in any direction that you want to go. Another key point of bringing a movement like the ATG split squat into your hypertrophy training is looking at how you are going to superset that with the correct second exercise. By pairing this with an upper body strength movement like the pull up, it has a extremely potent effect. See, we increase lactic acid accumulation by getting these opposing muscle groups or separate muscle groups training simultaneously. What that does is it will spike growth hormone later on in the day, which is excellent for helping build muscle. You can also maximize the time that you're in the gym by building intensity in one body part while another body part rests. So you don't have to worry about taking that additional rest period to let one body part recover because you're actually using that additional rest period to get work done in another area. Additionally, over a period of weeks, you are going to be able to progress your intensity by just shortening the amount of rest in between these movements and sets. 
So something you'll see a lot in my FBB programs. We will start with a longer rest period in the early weeks of training and progress to shorter rest periods. We're gonna aim for time under tension in these exercises from 40 to 60 seconds, so you're constantly moving for that length of time, making it both metabolic, aerobic, and strength building. All right, for number two today, we're gonna to be talking about the concept of reversing, specifically the reverse sled drag, and how we bring that into lower body power sets. Maybe we just invented the, the sissy sled drag. So his goal is to get his knee over his toes on every step. You're gonna have to contract your glutes and lean the fuck back. Reach, reach, reach. Good job. I'll do one more of those, good job. So it's very important. If you only get one training concept out of this, it's to understand that every exercise scales to your level. No joke, 10 minute backward walk a day is actually one of the best things you can do. Anyone older in your life, that could change their life in terms of preventing cartilage breakdown that winds up in knee replacements. Now, at mine and Marcus level, if we wanted to, we could keep those glutes locked. So this would only make us stronger and more bulletproof. So you see the first thing we're trying to understand is just that whatever's hurting our knees, the stronger we are in reverse of that, the less chance we have of the knee pain. And it does scale to any level. So we just saw, we just saw the easiest is walking backwards, letting those toes bend, having the knee over the toe. Walking backwards would be the easiest. I kind of want to do one more. Inside this specific conditioning workout that you're seeing, we're using the sled drag and some of the movements in here to implement control points. See, we value building a client's work capacity, not just their strength and aesthetic. See, your ability to complete a variety of different tasks and movements at varying levels of fatigue defines your work capacity. If you want your workouts to help you feel good, still leave you with energy for life, a broad ability to tackle tasks under fatigue will help get you there. And it'll also help you build great body composition along the way. Now I talked about control points. See, the movement selection within a conditioning workout like this and the proper design can be the difference between something that feels empowering and moves you forward and a workout that crushes your soul and leaves you feeling like you just got wrecked. As Ben says, performing reverse sled drags alone is a great tool to help build bulletproof knees. But when we combine this with some respiratory and local muscle fatigue from rowing and deadlifts like you're seeing, we can create an even more pronounced full body stimulus that will challenge athletes at all different levels and continue to give you that reversing reps that you need to keep your knees strong for years to come. All right, for number three, we're talking balancing the calf. We're gonna be training the front of the shin with tibialis raises is this muscle, the tibialis. That's the first line of defense against knee pain. The weaker that is, the more undue trauma is gonna come up into your knee in the first place. And again, you don't even have to put load on your knees to start this one. So Marcus can do one set to tap out over here. This is about 20% of Marcus's weight. All right, he's gonna let it full stretch. I put it a little heavier than 20%. Good, now at the bottom, I want you to pause every time. Go to the bottom and pause, there you go. So you feel that stretch coming through here. Many of us also have ankle impingement issues, but have we ever actually tried to address it? Now hold that top position, good. Now lower down, good. We're not counting on this one, we're just going. Good job, and then lower down. Now flex down, now flex it, good. This is the muscle that is closest to the patellar tendon, just underneath it. Holy crap, do I wish someone ever made me train this muscle. Now, a buddy of mine in Australia who makes home gym equipment made this so we can all have something to train this muscle. You just tell me when you're done. Look at this. This is a world-class athlete able to take this muscle to failure. Good job. Yeah. Yep. So where does the tibialis raise come in to functional bodybuilding training? Well, one of the things that we love to talk about is preparation for training or warm-ups. Specific joint specific warmups that are gonna optimize your training outcome. So you wanna to prepare to squat better. I wanna squat better, a lot of people do. 
but you might be missing out on some overlooked ways to develop a strong, beautiful, and pain-free squat. One that you can see from across the room and say, dang, that's a solid rep. If people warm up for squats at all, it usually looks like some simple band work, like a lateral band walk, or some glute work in the form of a hip thrust. But what about the muscles that support deep ankle and hip flexion? Yeah, both are so vital to squatting and they're almost never getting addressed. So this is why it's important for me to be introducing you to the tibialis raise. It has been a terrific way to not only support bulletproofing in the way that Ben has discussed, but also to help prepare for deeper and more stable squats. When we actually go to squat, we should be thinking about actively pulling ourselves into position. What that requires is the anterior tibialis muscle and the hip flexors to fire. See, this ankle and hip flexor warm-up that you're watching me go through, this protocol is one way to optimize squatting function inside a functional bodybuilding persist program that we're offering. So if you want to squat with more balance and stability while also making your knees more resilient for life, then think about introducing these tibialis raises into your training. All right, coming in at number four, strong behind the knees. That's the concept here. We're going to be looking at the Nordic hamstring curl specifically. Why not be world-class strong right behind here? Notice, if I'm going into a jump or something, the weaker I am there, again, I'm gonna put undue stress on my knee instead of trusting the hamstrings to do their job. This reduces wear and tear, plus, if we do get into a tricky situation, this might be the exercise that prevents you from having, oh, I had a freak blah injury. One of my missions with functional bodybuilding is to help you balance every aspect of movement in all directions as this is often overlooked in most training programs that I've seen. So adopting exercises like the Nordic Curl, it gives our functional bodybuilding training splits even more front to back specificity around the knee joint. So as I said when we started this episode, some of you are not just trying to get out of pain, some of you wanna build strength. Within this superset that you're watching, which could be done one day a week, I'm able to apply absolute strength development principles with thoughtfulness around the movement selection, which is gonna help ensure that we create balance strength from front to back. So you're building strength, but you're not putting yourself at risk for injury down the road. In this particular superset, you're seeing me perform a deficit snatch grip deadlift, which is actually a bit more of an anterior chain focused movement. I know it's a pull from the ground. Yeah, it's a deadlift, but because of the position, because of the deficit and where my hands are placed on the bar, I'm getting into a very deep squat at the bottom, which is actually forcing me to engage my quads and the front of my legs to drive out of the hole. While in the other exercise, the Nordic curl, this is specifically targeting behind the knees and the back of the leg. Powerfully balanced supersets like this allow us to build athletic strength without compromise to knee health and joint integrity. Okay, last but not least, we're talking deep squats. We're gonna talk about specifically the VMO squat or otherwise known as the cyclist squat. I found that the VMO squat is a very effective way to get a wide variety of athletes into a full knee bend, a deep squat safely. See, if we can scale down to the individual's pain-free ability, then it ensures great hip, knee, and ankle flexibility while we strengthen and build muscles of the lower body. See, movements that regress down easily and capture a big range of motion lend themselves so well to FBB training. So take a look at Ben and I as we dive into showing you how we can put this exact movement into your conditioning work. Inside our conditioning work, functional bodybuilding truly emphasizes quality movement in all the conditioning sessions that we do. We don't wanna just try and get the work done we try to achieve optimal positions and range of motion along the way. This way, we build muscle, maintain joint health, increase functional range, all while we condition our bodies. Selecting movements like the VMO squat while we condition helps us achieve those traits. Yeah, I like to tell people like, if you're functional worried about getting muscle, bulky yeah. and being, putting on too much, like it doesn't happen overnight. It Not really to mention, takes... look, at the, look at the ranges. Every row, I'm fighting modern life. Yes. Every squat, I'm fighting years of avoiding the knees, mm -hmm. you know, or trying to push through a PR at yep. the expense of knee pain. Yep. So, the I mean, shit got me. It fucking got me. Gotcha. If I would have done these, I would have been puking. Okay. That's why I had, I mean, I, didn't, I don't want to puke all over your gym. That's all right. It's all right. But I, I freaking love it. For someone like me, 
I don't even think someone has to, um, don't think of it as like an all or nothing, right? Yeah, absolutely. For someone like me, I can look at, I can, you know, be a member of your program and still apply it to my life. Yeah. No joke, I think even one of these sessions would make a massive impact. Once, once a week. And if you do the whole program, you know. If you hit one session like this for each major movement pattern, so if it was like a, a hinge and a push day and a squat and a pull up day, there's massive amount of benefit that can happen there. And for, for us, and just so everyone knows, like I chose the toughest of the toughest thing I could put on a piece of paper to just put you but through the paces. But it's simple. But it simplifies so much. And we could have done any of these exercises in a regress form using the same regressions you talk about yeah. with loading regressions. Yep. This could have just been body weight, yep. VMO squats, Again, the ring rows can regress a tremendous amount. We could have even put a band up on the pull-up bar and done band rows, which is another way of regressing that even further. The tuck-ups could have been done supine on the floor, laying down. Like, for example, I always base everything on my mom. Yeah. My mom could easily do this. She can walk backwards. She can yep. drag she something could. backwards. Totally. She can do the ring, this scales, to, the ring row yep. scales to any level. Yes. She can do her squats without weight. Yes. Um, and so like for me, I do my five 30 minute sessions a week, but the intention with that is then it, it bulletproofs my body to do other things. Yeah. So now it's really fun because now I'm able to like jump in and do stuff like this without joint pain. Yeah. But now if I want, this gives me another option in addition to basketball, you know, it used to be like, oh, I'd bulletproof my body to play basketball two games a week or whatever. Yeah. I could easily do two sessions. Of, you know what I mean? It's um, when something's really good, I think everyone could use it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So. And it's just another way of, I see this as another way of progressing great movement quality in the resistance training. So you decide I'm committed to bulletproofing my knees. This would enhance anything. Any, yeah. Any, any sport, anyone who wants more muscle mass, I would say, go get it like this. As a takeaway point for you today, I wanna offer you this bit of advice. Consider slowing down while you hit your next conditioning workout and attempting on every rep to achieve a complete range of motion. If you see people in the gym around you doing bro reps, shorten range of motion, it might be effective to accomplish some traits, but it will ultimately leave something on the table in the way of healthy and strong joints through a full range of motion that life may demand for later on. All right, to wrap up today, the way we move in life and sport places a high demand on our knees. Unchecked, modern life will inevitably lead you down a path of knee pain. And let's face it, pain sucks. So first, if you haven't checked out my video on how we can get you out of pain, go check the link in the description below. And if you wanna build muscle, get faster, or just simply feel better, then there is a way to incorporate the same movements that get you out of knee pain and use them to keep you that way while you build the body of your dreams. So no matter what your goal is, my mission is to show you through functional bodybuilding frameworks how you don't have to sacrifice your goal in order to keep your joints healthy and vice versa. See, gaining muscle shouldn't mean deterioration of your joints. Building your one rep max back squat shouldn't mean inevitable knee pain. Okay, now it's your turn. Time to put these movements and formats to work for you. Go click that link in the description below. You can learn more about functional bodybuilding training programs there. I'll see you next time.